Hello Guardians, Darkless and Lightless. Welcome to another Destiny 2 rant kind of video. I just, I'm gonna be honest, I felt a bit of spark for this one because I actually didn't get to talk about this last time because, well, a year ago, this channel wasn't a Destiny 2 channel. And so here I am now, I'm gonna talk about the Destiny content vault. Now first I'm going to talk about what's happening in recent times with Destiny Content Vault and then I'll talk about my overall views on the Destiny Content Vault. But this is a rant so I'm probably going to go off tangent a lot of the time so just be wary of that. Right, so let's start with what happened recently. So if you look on the uh, Bungie.net page you'll see the actual full article so in case I get anything wrong in this video you know like where to look and recorrect my mistakes. And then you can tell me how much of a useless I am <laughs> for uh, getting it wrong. So last night, along with the TWAB, we got a update on the Destiny Content Vault that basically said, oh look, Tangle Shore go bye-bye, which is the easiest way to put it. The strikes that I'll be going with it is the Hollowed Lair and the Bro uh, Brood Hole Strike, or is it? Yeah, it's Brood Hole Strike. I keep calling it the Brother Hole Strike and I don't know why. It's, there's clearly a witch at the end of it, like a wizard, should I say, sorry. But other than that, um, the seasonal activity will go, so thank god that seasonal hunt stuff's going, because le let's be fair, I've, I actually have not touched the seasonal hunt stuff in ages. When it comes to chosen stuff, however, the season of the chosen battlegrounds will be staying. So what's happening with that is we'll be getting the battlegrounds and strikes mixed into uh, a playlist now that's going to be called Vanguard Operations. Which kind of makes sense when you think about it. And I thought about this on the way to shop. I was like, wait a minute, what if they're trying to make more nightfalls like out of these battlegrounds? Could you imagine how hard a Grandmaster battleground would be? Ooh, it's just, it's just kind of it's kind of cool to think about, but kind of scary as well. But along with that, I also forgot to mention that they're going to be keeping the Warden and Nothing strike because that strike takes place in the uh, pr uh, Prison of Elders. It doesn't actually take place on the Tangle Shore. And it, it makes sense, you know? They're two different destinations. You think, oh, the Reef, yeah, obviously Tangle Shore and Prison of Elders, they must be like next door neighbours. But I swear they're like meant to be like a lot farther away than you think they are. So, there's that. So, what else is there? So, as far as I'm aware, the exotic missions are going. And I think that's really it, actually, because there's no sunsetting of weapons this time around. We're not losing four planets like last time. I genuinely think, compared to last time, it's a good amount that, like, we're losing. Because I feel like we're... Well, I, I say I feel like we're going to get the same amount back. But that depends on Bungie and what they're giving us in the season of Redacted, as they call it, and uh, the Witch Queen. Oh, one last thing I'll mention before I talk about the Destiny Content Vault overall is that they mentioned that um, the Forsaken pack will become available. Basically, it's going to be like a mini Forsaken DLC. You don't have to buy it if you've already got it. Bungie will still give you your three free... Forsaken Exotic Ciphers, I think they were. And obviously, if you have every, like, exotic, they'll eventually turn into Ascendant Shards. I think come the Witch Queen. I don't know if it's going to be immediate, or maybe you can, like, trade them or something. Another thing I'm going to mention is that Spider now will obviously be gone. Since uh, Tangle Shore's going, he's going as well. Whether he'll be uh, smuggled away, like... Uh, he's asking Drifter 2 in the lore, or if it'll be kill, eh, killed by the hand of uh, Pet Revenge is yet to be seen, obviously, until the end of the season or something. But what I will say is Master Raul will now become the, uh, basically will become the spider, which I'm really happy for now. So now, like, if you want to buy, like, enhancement cores, or not enhancement cores, the um, weapon upgrade modules, you can go straight to Banshee, and if you don't have enough, you can go to Raul, and, you know, he can give you the stuff you need, and you go back to him, you know? Instead of having to travel all the way to the Tangle Shore and all the way back to the tower. Like, it's especially worse on consoles, when it takes so long, like on the older consoles, to load in and out of places. Another thing I will mention as well is, uh, Shattered Throne will be staying. The Last Wish Raid will be staying. Obviously, the Dreamy City in general will be staying. The Forsaken Campaign will become free December 7th. It's basically the same time that the Destiny Anniversary event comes out, which I'm glad for, by the way. I know some people might say, oh, that's the only thing that's free. Like, let's be fair here, right? They're not completely removing Forsaken, and if they were, then I'd understand if they made Forsaken free. But they're only removing the Tangle Shore. They're removing, okay, to be fair, they're removing like three quarters of like the story and the content and so on and so forth. So like, it is kind of understandable, uh, maybe a bit of frustration, but I think it's okay, you know? Like, Forsaken's been out for three years, man. It's like, we all knew it was coming eventually, so. Rest in peace, Tangle Shore. And you have to remember, though, a lot of people are forgetting that we're getting the Witch Queen. Like, sure, you have to... Well, yeah, like, you have to pay for Thing, like, obviously. Like, you pay for Forsaken, and then you're gonna pay for Thing to get more stuff back. And plus... Not everything in the Witch Queen DLC will be, like, you know, paid for. Like, I assume they'll open up uh, Savathun's th uh, throne world to the public as well, like they did with Europa. Unless there's some, like, like weird bullshit. 
reason Bungie has to come up with is like, oh, only those who purchase the expansion can go here, which that would cause a lot of controversy, I'm not going to lie. But yeah, um, I don't think I'm missing anything from that. There's a lot to go off of that. There's no sunsetting of weapons. Forsaken weapons uh, as well will be included in Forsaken Pack, by the way. And I think that's it. So if you're just here for the um, Tangle Shore thing, then, you know, you can leave. It's cool. Thank you for staying. Thank you for listening. But now I'm going to talk about the Destiny content vault overall. So last year, again, I'll reiterate, we lost four places. We lost Mars, Io, Mercury. I was going to say Venus. Wait, Mars, Io, Mercury, and Titan. Two moons and two planets? Yeah, two moons, two planets. And literally, like, if you go to them places in, like, according to lore, like, there's literally just, like, a void of space where, like, you know where, like, the pla a planet was there, but it's just completely disappeared. So I was talking about the planets, so, like, a lot of the content disappeared at the time. Sunsetting was a thing as well, which basically said, lol, uh, legendary weapons and armor go bye-bye. And on top of that, obviously, other parts of the game were also removed. So, like, the Red War campaign, completely gone. Curse of Osiris campaign, um... And the, uh, oh, what should we call it? I think all the adventures are gone as well on the EDC and stuff. The EDZ, like, is the only, or, and Nessus are the two only things that, like, <laughs> have still stuff that, uh, are from the Red War, uh, part of the game. And, yeah, you can understand, like, especially with Beyond Light, we got no weapons. Like, we didn't get anything good. We're only starting to see that now, obviously, which, uh, comes to show that we just don't have enough patience as a community for, uh, waiting, you know? Like, if they say something's gonna happen, you know, we gotta hope that thing happens immediately. But when it came to it, like... Honestly, it's it's kind of the same thing. It's like that content was in the game for two years and it was free for a whole year as well. Wait, three years total, sorry. So like, honestly, I'm all right that it's gone. I do miss some of the older places and stuff. And I do like, I do hope that Bungie like actually consider bringing back Destiny 2 content first before bringing back more Destiny 1. Except the raids, obviously raids and strikes in Destiny 1 are cool. To bring back i wouldn't bother bring like if they're gonna bring back a whole like destination from destiny one honestly i won't bother unless it has like big ties to like the witch queen or the seasonal story going forward because even with the um cosmodrome they said at one point they were going to expand it but they haven't expanded it in like over a year now so it just goes to show like it's probably not a good idea to waste your resources on it now again unless like they're going to like bring back other strikes then yeah obviously expand it from there i wouldn't even mind seeing what the plague lands looks like nowadays but it would only be a glimpse though i'd rather just like get the strike itself you know the one with the ogre that has his eye missing i wouldn't mind getting that strike back because it was a uh, kind of an interesting one uh, to say the least and plus it would, add <laughs> it would add another snowy destination like we need more now but overall, at that time, it was horrible. Like, again, losing all the weapon stuff. I'm glad, though, that, like, some weapons that were meta aren't here anymore. But nowadays, it's it's more, like, it's kept more in check anyway. So, like, I don't feel like there's anything too, well, I say anything too dominant. And I'm getting, like, flashbacks to getting Dead Man tailed and Wardcliffe coiled from across the map, so... But yeah, that that would probably be another discussion for another day about weapons and stuff. But overall, again, like to the people complaining that you paid for it or that like there's this, that and the other, I kind of understand. But like, I don't think anyone should buy something expecting it to last forever. Like if you bought a DS and bought a game on that DS, are you still going to be using that DS 20 years later? Like emulation's a thing now. So even when the, all that is gone, like wh whether you want to pirate it or not, it, doesn't really matter as long as like you're not hurting the company's bottom line you know and for f sake like in that example like that's nintendo like so now i'm not encouraging piracy but i am encouraging basically playing stuff that's now just unobtainable especially like if they're not going to remaster the game in the future stuff obviously if they remaster the game stuff yeah go on buy it like actually do the thing buy the console buy the game do the thing but yeah, sorry, that was just a little tangent I went on. Because I've been watching a lot of uh, some ordinary gamers. His mindset's kind of starting to seep into mine. But anyway, I'll stop here before I uh, ramble on too much longer. I think the next video I'll do, I might react to the Festival of the Lost trailer. And I might even record myself playing a bit of the Festival of the Lost at the start. Just for a bit of a switch up. Just to see if I can uh, <laughs> actually start making more content for this channel again. As I'm going to continuously try to do, but fail to do at the same time. But anyway, Guardians, thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, obviously like it. Comment your thoughts on the Destiny Content Vault. Subscribe if you want and hit the bell if you do so desire. And I thank you again for watching this video.